friends. Welcome to episode six of the Redman and Riddle podcast. We've had a wonderful little journey so far. And today, we'll, this will be the last episode in this series of this podcast. Who ever knows if there'll be a season two? I think, I don't know if I have anything left to say, but, but we'll have it. I'm sure there's a few more Toza quotes that, that yes. you know? <laughs> detect a slight hint of sarcasm there, Jeremy. Just a small. Yeah. <laughs> it's been wonderful diving into these themes and thinking about what what should worship look like the worship of the living god the true and living god what should it look like in 2021 right. I've, I've really enjoyed these these times as much as anything else just to get to hang a little bit jeremy so true. it's good go over some old stories <laughs> today we are looking at dependence versus experience if you've been listening along with us you'll have found that in every episode we're doing a this versus that format mm. And today we're talking about dependence versus experience, depending on God versus how much your experience counts for that you've had in in ministry. And for me, a lot of this roots in this old Oswald Chambers quote, which Mm. has been a friend to me over Mm. many years. I have probably overused this quote (laughs) in so many different situations, seminars, conversations, but the reason is because it, it really rings true with me, wow. um, historically, biblically, you know, and but also in my own life. This, 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 this is a really special one for me. Complete weakness and dependence will always be the occasion for the Spirit of God to manifest His power. Wow. Complete weakness and dependence will always be the occasion for the Spirit of God to manifest His power. And you'll see in Scripture that that pattern is there for you to see time after time, whether it be David fighting Goliath, mm-hmm. whether it be Daniel, whether it be, there's so many examples in scripture of this dependence on, on God and this sense of you feeling very, very weak, yeah. becoming the breakthrough and the answer and, wow. the, and the way God expresses wow. his power, you know, his power being made perfect in our weakness. And I've seen it time and time again in my own life. Mm. I've seen it time and time again. I've been dropped in situations which I think, I, if it was me, I wouldn't drop me in this situation. I'm not ready for this. I don't have what it takes for this situation. I mean, I'm dependent even upon my capo or my capo, as I'd say. For being English. You put me up there without a capo, you might as well not even put me up there. I, I, I don't even know. We'll be doing a cappella worship. That's right. But I want to be more than dependent upon my capo. I've, right. I've seen time after time where I really honestly didn't feel like I had the stuff. I didn't feel like I was ready or I had what it took or this moment's too big for me or this moment's too poignant or there's too much pressure, but God came through and I realized, oh yeah, he smiles on that. He, That's right. He likes, he likes it when you know that you need him. Wow. He, li- he, he responds to that. Wow. And even the, I think about the very first time I led worship, mm. I was... I was not ready. I mean, I was basically forced to lead worship. That was the first thing that was going wrong here. True father. I'd said no probably 20 times. And my youth leader, a guy called Mike, he was like, no, Mm. we're going to make this happen. So in the end, he, he, it's kind of a mixture between manipulating and (laughs) trickery. And he he made a scenario where I was going to have to leave worship because there wasn't anyone else going to do it. And I'm so glad that he did. Hey, I'm so grateful on. to this day that he did because that that moment getting thrown in the deep end against wow. my will in every way. I just wanted to play these songs at home. I didn't want to be up the front. That right. looked like craziness to yes. me. <laughs> and like, why would you want to do that? But I'm so glad he did because I loved being up there and just seeing God minister through wow. these songs. And I loved set an example for the believers to follow, you know, through wow. singing my heart out. But I remember I was nervous to the core. I mean, I don't think I could have got more nervous to the point where I didn't even get to the end of the song. I only led one song. Let's put this in context. <laughs> We're not talking about like a 40 minute set. He's like, do one song. Just do one song. And it was there as a redeemer, which funnily enough, I, I huh. quoted on the last wow. podcast. We didn't get to stand in glory that day because I didn't get to verse three. (laughs) When I stand in glory, I was like, no, we're done. We're We're, done. I've made it this far. If I keep going, I'm going to fall off probably. Oh, my goodness. And I just remember being utterly dependent on God. Like, God, if you help me right now, I'll do anything for you. (laughs) You're making the vows. (laughs) So the point today, I guess, is what has changed. Yeah. You know, I, I am a lot more experienced now. I've got a lot of hours under my belt yeah. of leading worship yeah. and all sorts of things. But the very 
core nature of what's happening hasn't changed. Right. I, I might be better at guitar. I might be more skilled at shepherding people. But I need to be just as dependent upon God as I was that very first day because I need him just as much as I did that day. This is a spiritual activity happening right. here. And I need the Holy Spirit of God in my on, complete man. weakness and dependence to step in. How about you, first time you ever led worship? Did you? <laughs> well, my, mine was a little less dramatic, a little less. So you weren't you know, coerced into it. Yeah, <laughs> but, I, but I will tell the story of the very first time. Because, well, let me just, let me just say this. I, I think this has been a learning journey for me to know what it actually looks like to follow the Holy Spirit, to learn how to be aware of Him, how He's speaking to me, and to be obedient when I feel His promptings or His voice. I'm coming from probably a more evangelical, conservative background as far as worship leading. And, and so I, I, it's not like I didn't have a grid for this, but, but I, I, my baptism by fire in this was leading at this beautiful little charismatic church called Bethel Church, which is now known a, around the globe. But I was coming into that church as someone who had like almost 10 years of worship leading kind of under his belt and, and even two years itinerant traveling worship leading ministry, which yeah. is largely just in the Bible belt. And, and structure, structure, you just never saw the value of structure like you did when, when you're leading. And the structure is so needed. And so, I mean, I knew where my sets, I knew where they began. I yeah. knew the middle part. I, I knew the ending. I, I, and I just had them dialed. I knew there the transitions. And we just had this beautiful little thing that was so packaged. And man, when I stepped into that, that environment, I remember Brian Johnson, he, he just said, hey, man, would you come co-lead with me on a Sunday night? And I'm like, sure. What, what, you know, <laughs> that's, that's harmless. And so I should have known I was in trouble when he didn't ever contribute his song. And uh, he's like, no, 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 if, it, like, if it's needed, I'll, I'll, I'll jump in. You just, you just kind of do your thing. And so Fantastic. I, I didn't know on Sunday nights that they could worship. Like you didn't actually have a stop time. Yeah. Like you, you just, it was. Oh, like, that's so unusual. So, yeah. so, you know, and I, and again, for me, I realized like, and again, this is a lengthy time for some churches, but 30 minutes was the worship journey. If you pushed it to 35, then you're, you were in extra grace and glory. I have this, you don't realize you have a clock in your head until you're in an environment that doesn't have that clock. That's so interesting. And so I'm, I'm leading and I didn't realize that Sunday night worship can go like hour, hour and a half. Yeah. I'm just leading and I'm just going for it. And, but man, we ran out of songs probably about 30, 35 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm looking over at Brian. I'm like, just you're like, like you, you, you want the preacher to walk up. You're like, <laughs> you know, I'm, come on. I'm like, who, who's supposed to end this thing? Yeah. It, this we're, 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 we're good. We've, we've had a great journey. And he just kind of looked over at me and he kind of just shrugged and, get, you know, gave this kind of knowing smile. But he's like, you're doing great kind of a thing just keep going and so i did what all desperate worship leaders do and i'm like i pulled out my exalt these and you know any little Fantastic. pocket song you you, you you have but i tell you what that was that moment was like the catalyst for me really stepping into leading and if i were to actually honestly matt because this is like this is the biggest burn one of the biggest burns in my heart so for me but if i were to break down my worship leading into like two different eras there would be the error before I, I actually knew how to really follow the Holy Spirit or be present or even slightly aware of how he was speaking or leading. And then there was an error of like giving myself over to that and yeah. going like, because I realized the only way I was going to survive leading at Bethel Church, the only way I was going to survive is, is if I actually learned how to follow the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So it was a completely, it was like being thrown into the deep end just, just in, a, in a different way. And I remember watching the stream back that night. You could see the panic on your face. <laughs> <laughs> all the awkward moments. And they did send up a pastor to rescue me and, and all of that kind of thing. But what I realized watching back, I realized that oh, there was a clock in my head that was telling me I was done. And we hadn't even really even begun. Yeah. And I, so I had to deal with that. But the most important thing is, is I realized how many holy moments, and I, I, I use the word holy moment, just saying this, how many moments where I felt it was obvious that the Lord was resting. Yeah. It was obvious that his presence was, was, was moving, that I just blew right through. Yeah. And what I realized is that I was always a song ahead. Like I was following a program inside my brain and I was not like, I was not in tune. I was not attentive to what the Holy Spirit might be doing. So in it's, the it was based on dynamics, like musical uh, dam dynamics in your head. Is that, or what was it based on? Yes. I mean, you know, in so many ways, it was just like I had this set already laid out in my head and I had its transitions mapped, but yeah. somehow that blocked my ability to hear or feel or sense what the Lord was doing in the moment. And so the next time I, I said, hey, Next time I feel the Holy Spirit land on something, or if I feel his presence, or if I feel like, oh, there's something going on, I may not know what it means, but I'm going to just wait, and I'm going to, and I'm going to ask the Lord what I'm supposed to do. 
Yeah. And, 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 and then go on from there. And the next time I led worship, it did go for an hour and a half. And never once did I feel like I was dry of songs. But at every moment that I just sensed his presence land on, I would stay. And I was just so interesting. It was like, I call it kind of like walking on water because you every step you're like, I could sink. I could go down. <laughs> this could be a train wreck. But every step I felt the Lord meet me. And it was just like a little chorus idea here or something there or just like the instrumentation would kind of take over. And it was as I learned to honor what he wanted to do, it literally revolutionized leading worship for me. Yeah. And even if I've come back to an incredibly conservative moment, even if I come back to like, here's 15 minutes and do, do, do your thing or, you know, whatever it may be, it doesn't really matter because something that was formed in me there, I still carry in whatever environment that I'm at. And so, man, I have such a passion for other worship leaders to know how to recognize how the Lord's speaking and how to honor his leadership. Yeah. And so you're more than a song leader, isn't it? It's getting into That's that it. priestly side of things. And I, I, and I guess you're not saying don't prepare. No. I mean, you're, there's a value in that. There's a value in asking the Holy Spirit beforehand. <laughs> yeah. It's but, like you got these two camps. You got the preppers and, and yeah, you got the preppers. spontaneous people yeah. who are just like, if, it's, if the only way it's spirit led is if it's utterly spontaneous, yeah. like there's no preparation. And no, it, it, it's not that. What I realized is that it's constant awareness. Yeah, that's It's great. awareness when I prepare. It's awareness when I lead. And not, yeah. not for once do I think that I have the full download when I have the set. So, so I, 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 it's like I never take my eyes off Jesus, so, yeah. so to speak. It's not like, okay, thanks, Lord, I got the download, and I'm going to execute it from here. What yeah. you realize is this is kind of a step-by-step -step thing where, we, where he teaches us actually how to abide yes. in him and how to walk with him. And I'll tell you this, ever since that day, I've never had one single worship set that went how I planned it. And not that it was a train wreck at all in any way, shape, or form, but it just always, as I've been faithful to just honor those little promptings. And yeah. Oh my goodness, the stories I can tell you. That's amazing. Of, 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 of just learning to honor that prompting and not go with the first song that I had or, or the third song that I had and just to, or to insert this little idea and something would open up. And here's the thing that I'm most passionate about is this, what I've, what I've learned is like, we, we hunger for spiritual breakthrough. Yeah. Like we, we're, we're longing for it. We're like, oh, let heaven invade earth, God. And we pray it. Like we pray it like we actually mean it. Like, Lord, do whatever you want to do tonight. We pray that prayer so many times. And then we do exactly what we planned on doing. That is and funny. It's you know what's true. so funny about that Oswald? Is it Chambers? You yeah. He yeah. said, it's like, listen to the complete weakness. Yeah. Dependence. Yeah. Like that's very romantic sounding. But it's not until you're in a moment of complete weakness and dependence that you realize like you're like an oh god oh god oh god help me like like it's it's in those moments it's like the lord delights yeah to come into those moments and use us but that place is a place we resist like human beings we don't it's like so it. uncomfortable it's so uncomfortable and so what we're saying is like because i really man we could i could jump off so many cliffs here you can intervene at any time matt just, just no jump i'm in. enjoying this well because for me, I think what we're talking about is so much deeper than just learning how to, how to, how to obey a few promptings. You know, as worship leaders, I, I think what I have a burn to see, because I, I truly think that if Christian leaders would give themselves to the leadership of the Holy Spirit, it would radically, it wouldn't just radically, all, you know, alter church life as we know it. it, it, it well, it, it would radically alter church life as we know it, because so much of the way that we do leadership, so much of the way that we do church is we control, like we, we stay in our safety zones. Yeah. Like we, 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 we do, we stay in what, what's proven, what's successful, like what we know, like, and, and we stay with our methods. And again, those methods work. They have some measure of success. But but what I've seen is, is, is like we can either keep doing the two plus two equals four <laughs> method or we can do the two plus the Holy Spirit equals thousands. There really is like there, there's two different like entire realms. And, and I have found that the simple key of obedience, when I will surrender, when I will put myself like willingly in a place of utter weakness where I don't pretend to know the next song and I just go, Lord, what do you want to do? When if I will yield myself in a moment, I will get to see what he can do. Yeah. And I remember we talked about John Wimber before, but John Wimber was just so frustrated. He was a church growth expert. You know, he, he, he taught churches how to grow, <laughs> how to grow numbers. And, and I, I remember this, it gripped me so much because the, the Lord spoke to, to him. He said, John, I've seen your ministry. Now I'd like to show you mine. 
Yeah. And I think I've come to a place in my Christian life where, where I've seen my ministry. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen the extent of what my four brilliant songs, you know, <laughs> can do and they're all their transitions and, and, and that power. I've seen what I can do with a band and all those kinds of things. I've seen my ministry. I've seen what my voice can do, what my songwriting gift can do. But I have seen what his ministry yeah. can do. And there was like, it was a line in the sand for me. It's like, oh, there's no going back. Like, I can never go back to the 30 minutes and just being satisfied with a great band and four songs and lunch, you know? Like, there's no going back for me. It's, it's like, no, the Holy Spirit, I, you must have your way yeah, in me. Yeah, that's great. Because if, and, and whatever, Matt, you can intervene. Do no, I, that's, <laughs> I'm, lo- I'm, I'm loving this. I'm on the same page. And I, and I love that, especially when you've been leading a while like we have. Yeah. Like, to actually realize, wait, this isn't something you grow out of, dependence no, and... No like needing to be completely weak before God. Yeah. If you don't do something here, nothing spiritual, meaningful, profound, we'll break life open. changes are going to we'll happen. It has, it. it has to be you and, and to teach your teams that. And, and what's interesting is because most things in life that you spend time on, you spend many hours on, you become more experienced wow. and you actually become less dependent just right. naturally, right? right? I mean, I'm thinking about the first time I drove a car. In England, most of our cars are stick shift, what we call manual. So you've got one more thing to think about, kind of two in a way, because you've got to put the clutch down with your foot as well. Wow. So the first time you're ever in a car, you know, you're going to go, in le- I mean, I'm not even that good. You can testify and m- all my friends and especially my wife and children, I'm not a very good driver. I do my best. I, I, I have focus issues, so which is not helpful when you're at the steering wheel of a car. But anyway, so the first Every time, though, you, you get in there, I mean, you're nervous. You don't really understand, like, what does this do? What's that do? Yeah. You know, and then you're understeering and oversteering. Right. And then you're very dependent on the person next to you to wow. tell you what to do next. Wow. And you change gear and you've got to do the mirror signal maneuver. There's a ton of stuff to process. Mm. Wow. The very least thing you're doing is looking down that road where you're going. You are <laughs> consumed with what's going on inside that it's car. So true. For, fast forward so a couple of years. You see someone on the freeway, they're eating a sandwich between their head and their shoulder. They've got a phone in their hand. They're shouting at the kids in the back. I don't know. You, you know what I'm saying? It's yes. like the complete multitasking yes. and, they, and they feel so confident in yeah. what they're doing. <laughs> now, that's not ideal either. The ideal is that you become so familiar with the inside of that car right. that you actually start thinking about where you're going. Oh, wow. And for me, that's the worship leading thing is that, yes, I can become accustomed to operating in different way, in in certain ways, and I know how to right. play this song, and I know how to play these chords, and how to function with the band. But I'm going to be just as dependent. I'm going to think about wow. Lord, where are you taking me today? Where wow. are you taking us That's today? It. Like get, That's it. I'm looking down that that road. Yes. And and the thing is, it's the same with songwriting. With right. songwriting, you don't become less dependent the more you've had some kind of experience or even momentum or success or whatever yeah. word you want to use yeah. in that area. Right. Most things in life, the more experience you have, you become less dependent. Like if you're an accountant, I imagine an accountant can go into an office and they have a breakthrough one day to figure out how something to do something. Right. They can go in the next day and repeat their success yeah. and they can do it the next day after that and they don't ever lose that. Yeah. It's not quite the same for us. With songwriting, you right. can write a song that seems to connect with people and then your very next song, you're back, you're back at square one. I don't really know what I'm doing. I don't really know how that happened. I know that must have been the breath of God on oh, this Lord, thing. Forever keep that a mystery. Yeah. And, yeah. and I know there's a lot of things. I'm not, I'm not belittling learning your craft. I'm not oh, belittling, don't. you know, contending for songs and growing as a you know, creative person. But what I'm saying is even with all that in the mix, there's still going to be that element in what we do because it's a spiritual yes. activity. That's right. There's going to be that element of needing the Holy Spirit to show up in the mix here. Otherwise, things are not going to be anything better than just normal or ordinary. Yeah. And I think for me, it's even, it's it's like that dependence thing when you realize that. I think almost the worst place is when you begin to get good at something and then you actually think it really is you. And I'm so grateful for all the times where I I got my hand back on the wheel as if I knew what I was doing and I fell flat on my face because, you know, it, it's like, no, the Lord did not allow me to succeed, thankfully, through any formulas. And I'm actually so grateful for that, looking back on it. But 
I think the thing about even knowing the mechanics, and, and this is where history, when we talk about experience or history, history actually is supposed to work for you. This is never supposed to replace our dependence on the Holy Spirit, but it is, aren't we so glad that, that we're not just in that newbie driving stage where, where we don't even know how to work the blinker and where we're so like scattered. But, but, I, but I think for me, to even add a little bit to, the, to that language of like, you, you, you get to be so familiar and so experienced in some ways with, with how to operate the vehicle, at least the musical side of the vehicle, yeah. that, that you're able to focus on, on who you're following. Yeah. And I, I think I've heard so many Christian leadership talks, and, and I've read so many leadership books, and I, and I love everything that leadership books have to say. But the thing about the Christian life that I keep coming back to is the Christian life is not actually—it's less about leading, and it's more about following. Yeah. Like, we are called to follow Jesus. And I, I, I'm forever grateful for the person that said the way to follow Jesus, this side of heaven, is you learn to follow the Holy Spirit, the one who was sent to us to lead to God. And guys, this is like, this goes back to, I know all this, there's a, there's a generation, generation after generation reads the book of Acts. They read it. They, they fawn over the early church. They're just like, oh my gosh, what community, what synergy, what, you know, they just like, how come we can't have that? Where did we go wrong? Let's get back to Acts 2. And I think we will never get back to Acts 2 without coming back to the impetus, the one who actually started it all. Yeah. And I challenge you guys to read through the book of Acts and study the role of the Holy Spirit. He was the one who ignited, who led, who spoke, who guided who, who and I just had this this passion in my heart that we would know what that means. And for me, again, it is it's become a lifestyle. Yeah, like it's it's not just like I don't go. Oh, it's my turn to follow the Holy Spirit because I'm preparing for a worship set now. Like I realized that this was if I were as to actually learn how to do this in 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 one area, I had to learn to do it in all the areas. So this is like I've had to learn to have how to have conversations like with the Holy Spirit of like. Holy Spirit, should I spend this money? <laughs> Holy Spirit, should I should I should I do this? And and that's not because that's not because um, I don't think I have a sound judgment or you know discernment. It's because I understand my position. Yes, like great. I am a follower of the living God. Like I am not, I am someone under authority. And you have to realize, like, hey, I have to act like I'm under authority. I have to actually act like I'm not in the captain's seat. And and I have to actually go like, Lord. If I want to abide in you, if it says, if apart from you, I can do nothing, then, then I have to establish this kind of direct communion with you where I'm discerning what your will is. And I, so I think, good. man, that lifestyle of learning how to do that, man, has just kind of revolutionized. And it, because it, it, it will, it doesn't just change your worship leading. It changes your entire way of life. That's you, so good. So I love that. Making it a pattern of how you live. That's wonderful. <laughs> Not just like, oh. Lord, I've got a worship service coming. I'm going to need you today. And it's like, a, but that's oh. where it can stay so many times. So I love talking about that as a lifestyle, and and also, but to think about worship service too for a sec. Mm. So, what are the things we come become dependent on? And and it's really interesting to me. I can become dependent on the band, like certain players. Wow. Like, oh, I feel so much more confident <laughs> if this guy's, t- and to the point where no, I really need that guy to be playing. And then the sound, the lights, certain songs can become like our kind of safe place. It like, is, it's true. I know that I'll be all right in this song. 100%. I know that if I get in trouble, this is my comfort blanket. <laughs> this will be my little snuggy worship song <laughs> that I'm going to bring out. It's and so good. Toza said, because because we, we've gone through every, we're on episode six, yeah, you, you and I haven't mentioned him yet. Streak now. I haven't mentioned no. him. Oh, no. So That's amazing. I know. I did pretty yeah, well. We went to <laughs> Tozer said, in our churches today, we're leaning too heavily upon human talents huh. and educated abilities. Wow. We forget that the illumination of the Holy Spirit is a necessity, not only in our ministerial preparation, but in the, in the administrative and leadership functions of wow. our churches too. If we really knew the full provision and the spiritual anointing that Jesus promised through the Holy Spirit, we would be far less dependent on so many other things. Wow. That's so true, isn't Preach, it? Preach, Tozer. I mean, how's he how's he doing this? It's like decades ago, and it's <laughs> yeah. like he's saying it perfectly for today. But it's so true. I mean, I'll even be more confident on a certain guitar, or or I haven't got my guitar di. And you're like, what are you talking about? These these are, these are such minor little things. It's just props and tools. But what don't get up there without asking the Holy Spirit to be your guide, and with, without acknowledging 
your dependence upon him. It reminds me of the story in the Old Testament where David counts the fighting men. And it, it's always struck me, this, this story, the poignance of it for my own life. We're years and years into David's life and ministry and, and being on the throne and all this stuff. And it's towards the end of his life, actually. And he says to Joab, the commander of the armies, go out and count the fighting men. Mm-hmm. And Joab even says, there's a couple of accounts yeah, in the scripture, but says he says, like, do don't this. go doing don't that. Do it, do That's it. stupid. <laughs> I mean, that is offensive to the Lord. Don't wow. go. And David said, no, go and do it anyway. And, and Joab w- was filled with such reverence, knowing he was doing the wrong thing. He didn't even count one of the tribes because wow. he just knew this isn't the right this thing. Isn't it. So he comes back. By then, David has realized that he's made a big mistake. And David is so good at repenting yeah. and getting back to true north. I mean, it's where we get this so moment where he, you know, he says, I will not sacrifice to the Lord. Yes. That which cost me nothing, which right. is, a, is a whole other sermon yeah, in that, really right? But, um, but what happens is he realizes that he's offended God. And obviously he, pray, he pays a price for it. But I like to contrast the dependency and the humility of that little shepherd boy going out to fight Goliath all those years ago, and then this king now who's got wow. all this entrustment, wow. all this fame and fortune, all this power, and he's, he's lost a sense of that dependence upon God. He's, got, he, he, he's dependent upon what's the size of our army. Mm-hmm. There's a pride aspect to that. There's a, there's a self-confidence or a, a, a full sense of security in mm-hmm. like, how, you know, how big are we now? How strong are we now? And he's forgot, like, when I was a kid, I went out with a staff and some stones and a sling in my hand, and I and defeated a giant because wow. I cared so passionately about right. the, the honor of God's name, but because also knew he was going to back me up. I knew right. that if I stood up for him, I could walk out into that arena and he's going to back me up. And what an amazing heart stance. Yeah. What, what a posture of the heart in that moment. You, we, we make it like this kid's story, but think about it. All the other warriors on Israel's side, they weren't going to fight this guy. This guy was epically scary. Not, not one of them would go out and fight him. And, and it took this little guy bringing lunch for his brothers <laughs> who just, I mean, he had a little bit of experience, right? Fighting the lion and the bear and that, but that wasn't his trump card. That right. wasn't what he was leaning That's on. Right. He, he was leaning on the strength of God. He That's was right. in his complete dependence <laughs> and his passion for God's glory. He was just leaning into the strength of God and saying, wow. I know he's got me. Right. And, and, and you compare and contrast that. And I think that's sometimes what we do, whether it be, yeah, I've got all these years of leading under my belt now, or I've led for this size crowd, or I've written this many songs, or I've got a really great band now, you know, and we've got a brand new sound system. It can be so many things you lean on, you forget, no, 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 just get back to the heart of that little shepherd boy. And if you don't forget that, the Lord will help, he'll he'll remind you. Yes. Because I don't know how many times I'm like, oh, I got got the 18, (laughs) I've got this, I've got that. And then you get up and this sets a disaster. And then then when you go like, oh, I've got not even the B team, I've got like the C team. (laughs) And then the night turns into like a total encounter. And I think the Lord just delights to, I think there's something to it, like, he says, no, it's like in his presence, no flesh can glory. Like, like, that, like there can be no dependence on the flesh. And, yeah. But the thing is, is like we're almost wired to be dependent on our flesh. It's such a contrary lifestyle yeah. for us. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a contrary choice to go like, I will not lean on my flesh because that's the place where we actually find security. But so, I will lean on the Lord. Absolutely. So in your book, The Reset, which yeah. we've visited a few times and, yeah. I, and I've loved, you have this phrase in there where you talk about where, where we know the formula better than his presence. So often we're in a place where we know the formula. And a m- moment ago, you said the word formula. Yeah. And talk a little bit about that. Formula is okay to some degree as, sure. a, as a pattern probably, right? As a pattern, sure. Is, the problem becomes when we become fully dependent <laughs> upon it. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think what we really we really wrestle through. We, we we've touched on this with entertainment versus encounter, and I think what I've realized is that songs in and of themselves can carry a power. Yeah, like ten thousand reasons. The reason why it works is because just about anybody with a moderate to meager vocal talent. <laughs> For example, me. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, that's not quite true, but we'll go with it. But or, or someone like an absolute powerhouse of a vocal can lead it. But, For example, you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> the point being that that it doesn't the song itself carries a power to it. 
And and again, musicianship. Like we we go and see great bands because when they put together their sounds, it's like there's a weight. Like when you get someone behind a board who knows how to mix, there's a power to that. Like yeah. all of a sudden you can feel the bass and you can f- feel the instrumentation. There's a power to all of these things that we can do. And I would say we are in danger of making the worship experience very formulaic yeah. versus versus spiritual because because there is a power in it, guys. Like we can, and we know this. I mean, I'm, we're talking to worship leaders here. You know this power that we speak of. You know that if you put together the top three or four songs in CCLI, the ones that are hitting hard and, and causing a reaction in people, like we can generate a certain momentum. I'll never forget being a, in a stadium with Francis Chan and he just said, He's like, I don't want a man-made wave. He's like, I want a God wow. wave. Yeah. And he's like, we know how to do this. He's like, I know how to even generate something as a preacher with my charisma, with my gifting. With the... He's like, but I have, I've, again, I've seen the extent of my ministry. And I just want, I want to see something that only God can do. And you know who else wants to see something that only God can do? God. <laughs> God wants to do something that only God can do. And he is looking for yielded vessels. He's looking for, and, and I'll, just, I'll just share this, guys. Here's the terrifying thing about following the Holy Spirit is you are not in control. Yeah. And you do not get to call the shots. Like you are someone who is obedient and until you learn the art of obedience, you will never step into a spirit-led way of life. And I, I'll just share one little tiny story because it's, it's humorous and embarrassing all at the same time. But I was just on this journey and I was learning how to do this. I was leading for a pastor's conference and anybody knows what it's like to lead for pastors. Pastors are like almost the worst people to lead. It's the people you don't want to lead. It's like the people who run the services are never the people that you want to try and lead into worship. They know all the tricks of the trade. You can't go, come on church and all this stuff that we do. Like they, they don't respond to any of that. That is and, funny. Uh, so I'm leading at this, this pastor's conference and I remember being in rehearsal. And again, this isn't really about the story or, or the formula. It's about obedience. This is what, this is where we learn that. But and I, I started doing the cheesiest thing you can do as a worship leader. And I started playing a U2 song. <laughs> <laughs> and I started playing Are this song. Are you going to tell us what song it was? <laughs> yeah, it, was, it, was it was, I still haven't found what I'm looking for. Yeah. And I remember kind of musing on it. I was, I was just kind of literally checking my microphone. The band's still setting up. And, but I, this, this thing came out of me. And I said, you are all, you are all I've been looking for. And for whatever reason, guys, that sounds really cheesy. But in the moment, there was some kind of power on it. Yeah. And I remember that moment, like feeling something in my spirit that was and I, like one of those moments where you're like, I wonder if I should sing that. And I'm like, no. Like, you know, the thought that you like never, never, not at a, not at a leader's conference, not at a, <laughs> like, no way am I doing that. Like, you're, no way. I'm like, no, no, no. I just pushed it as far down as you could push that, but it was almost like, I, I think it was the Holy, I know it was the Holy Spirit now. And, and so I get, we're about 40 minutes deep, beautiful set. Everything was going swimmingly. And I get to this moment in the set and I just, all I feel is like, you're supposed to sing that. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, like... No. <laughs> and I, and all I remember is I'm like, okay. And I just start singing it. And I, you know, start singing the first couple lines of a verse. I don't remember all the verse it was. And it's one of those moments where I was new to the culture. I did not have a standing history. <laughs> like, like this could have gone horrifically wrong. And the second I start singing, I have climbed the highest mountains. And I started, <laughs> the whole room just goes like dead quiet. No like, qui- like, because everyone's just like in the tension, like starts to mount in the room. And almost everyone knows the song. It's like, where is this going? And and I'm just like, I just kept singing. And then I got to, I said, you, but you are all, you are all. I have been searching for you all. I have found, I said, I, said, I found what I'm looking for. And I can't describe what had happened. After the dead stillness, there was like a holy explosion. Fantastic. That went off in the, in, you know, in the room. And it was like the, the Holy Spirit broke out in a profound way. Is that because I sang a U2 song? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, some, some people out that, there. If you tried to replicate that, it would be a disaster. You would, you would probably never want to show your face in that room again. But because it wasn't about the U2 song, I think it was the Lord going, will you be obedient yes. to me? I had a similar story. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if it's better or worse. <laughs> <laughs> so we went to Norway one time. 
And it was a long, long journey. We didn't fly. We went by boat. So it was like six hours drive up from England to the north of England. And then over on a 24-hour crossing across the North Sea. I mean, it's like not a fun ferry crossing. So we get there. I'm in a bad mood, honestly. I'm like, (laughs) what? Uh, you know, how this, many great sets however good this mood. is that wasn't worth it <laughs> and it wasn't even good it was horrible it was a horrible time it was a really hard time leading worship I'm in the middle of this set and I'm literally thinking like, I just want to get this over with it just wasn't connecting it was a it was a tough group oh, wow. to lead with may or may or may not have had a bad attitude <laughs> so and I just hear in my mind these couple of lines from a Michael Jackson song. Uh, oh, my gosh. You are not alone. And I'm thinking, <laughs> what the heck's that about? And it's just, similar wow, to you. That. It just wouldn't go away. Yeah. To the point where I thought, I've got nothing to lose here. <laughs> I'm never coming back. <laughs> and people don't like it already. So And so I just start wow. singing out these couple of lines and then hang there, move into the next song. Uh, and then when we get off stage, this lady comes up, she's oh. crying her eyes out. And she said, I drove seven hours to be here tonight. Wow. And in my mind, with my bad, bad attitude, I'm thinking, that's nothing. I went 24 <laughs> hours. <laughs> so and she goes, I, I came because I was desperate. And I really at the end of my rope. And I was saying to the Lord for seven hours on the way here, you've left me all alone. Why have you left me all alone? And, and it was a mad moment for me, just learning to, wow. to pay attention Yes. To those little whispers, even yes. when they seem like not the right this thing. This is like nonsense. This is yeah. going to go horrible. And it was just a really, ah, I don't know, profound moment for right. me. Thinking I could have just carried on my yes. set, left it there. But now I've got something to go home with where I saw God at work. That's right. And it's all because I just paid attention to that yes. little whisper and then took the little step. It's obedience. Yeah. And and it's just taking one step, isn't it? He's probably not going to give you the next five steps. No, he doesn't. He Us- usually this, the, the journey of faith <laughs> is like, here's one step yeah. and take this. Yes, that's literally it. So back to your book again, you said in the book something about ranking your values. Huh. And while we're talking now, I'm thinking about what we're saying here. Huh. We're kind of saying that if we're ranking our values, then our, we do have a value of excellence. Right but it's below the value of dependence and listening right. and whatever that might be described as. The, the, the Excellence is, is very much in the mix, right? Yeah, it's, but, it's an important value. But it's subservient to, That's right. to this I, li- I like the language subservient just because I, I, I think... Yeah, if if you know. Well, I, I stole that word from your book. That's <laughs> that's why you like it. <laughs> that's a brilliant word. Man. Yeah. I just uh, say it again. I no, I, I think I think that's the real truth of the matter. It's it's not that excellence isn't a value. It 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 just is not. It's nowhere near the highest value. In fact, it must live in servitude, literally, to our highest values. Yeah. And 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 I honestly think excellence, there's never been so much talk of excellence. And I, and I, I do love that. We do understand the importance of it. I've seen many worship sets, beautiful moments, sabotaged by, by someone's lack of excellence. I, I champion the value. It's important, but it always lives. Because once as I, w- I used to muse, because I'm like, but us following the Holy Spirit is the much higher value. Yeah. In the one sense, which means that we risk train wrecks. We, we actually, we sacrifice some excellence sometimes, quote unquote, excellence, to follow the Holy Spirit because yeah. we risk the band not being able to follow us. We, if you take a chance on a chorus or, <laughs> or, or whatever, it's like by being obedient, we risk it not going amazingly well. And if you have excellence as your highest value, you'll never take those risks. You will do what was calculated, what was planned, and what you know you can execute flawlessly. Yeah. But this is not about flawless execution. This is about obedience to what the Holy Spirit speaks. Because again, what we're after is, you know what, like, let's just use both of our examples. I don't even know the full extent of what happened because of my obedience. You got a little testimony, a little taste of it. But that's just because that person actually came up to you. There's so many things that, that we do in faithfulness, but we never, we won't ever know the fruit until heaven. That's going to be the best part about heaven as far as I'm concerned, is we get to see the full fruit of our obedience to the Lord. I love that. And I, and I feel like, again, if you had just flawlessly executed your set and honored the value of excellence, someone's life, they would have left and who knows where their life would have gone, whether into suicide or walking away from the Lord, being like, I've been abandoned. But because of your obedience, and let's say it caused the band to flub it, <laughs> it's yeah. like, but a woman encountered the Almighty Living God speaking right into her situation because of obedience. So we do not exalt the thing of excellence above following the Holy Spirit. It's always, we'll follow the Holy Spirit no matter what. Yeah. And excellence then gets redefined. 
it gets put in its proper place as like excellence then looks like a band doing their best yes. to follow a leader who is following the Holy Spirit. That's great. That's true excellence. I love that. Two words that I love putting in opposition to each other also are obedience versus significance. Wow. Because I think sometimes the temptation is to follow significance. Right. Like I want to do something significant with my life or with my worship leading or with my songs or wherever it be. You know, I'm I'm chasing after that. I want to do so, and actually, that isn't really the way it happens. You chase right. after obedience, right? And then God on, li- God looks after the rest. He, really he looks does. after the, the significance. And, he and has if, a verse about that. It's uh, something like, "Seek first the kingdom." Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> I'll look up. I'll, I'll, I'll look after the rest. To paraphrase <laughs> he, he, it, it's a promise. Yeah. yeah, and Jesus, the most wow. obedient act in all of history, was actually the most significant act in all of history. Wow. So the cross, Jesus at Calvary, Jesus didn't go there for significance. <laughs> Even though it was phenomenally significant, Jesus went there for obedience. Wow. And the significant part wow, flowed man. from that. And I think that's one thing. And so as we start to get towards this, the end of this conversation today, we talked a lot about following the Holy Spirit. I'd like to just talk a little bit about the fruit of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Okay. Because that... That counts for so much in our walk. Mm. You know, it's not, this isn't about how much we achieve. Mm. It's about who we are while we're doing it. Yeah. You know, and there's no point having this amazingly powerful, significant thing. And then behind the stage, you're not the same person or things aren't matching up. Wow. And one thing I've seen a lot in churches is you would almost think that efficiency and productivity are a fruit of the Holy Spirit. They're so highly valued. When we talk about ranking our values, uh, sometimes they're so high up there. Yeah, it's real. And, and then beneath them is gentleness and patience and joy and kindness and self-control. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. No, no, no. These things right. go, these That's are right. at the top of the tree. That's here. right. Come on. You know, this, it, you can be as productive as you want. You can have as many people minister to as you like. But mm. if those things aren't in the mix, then, mm. I'm, then I'm checking out. That's right. I, and I, I've started to think that's really one of the main filters I'm running everything through uh-huh. when I'm in other environments and looking at how other people are doing things, but yeah. more than anything myself, obviously. Yeah. Running myself through. There's no, Matt, there's no point writing a great song if you're going to be rude to someone or, <laughs> or dismissive of someone mm. or... In, impatient with someone wow. in, in the in the process it wow. doesn't it doesn't mean anything wow and i think a lot about that i'm thinking a lot about just that phrase of it's not how much we achieve or what we do it's it's who we are yes while we're doing it and yes. th- and this will be our worship to god a friend of mine years ago graham kendrick he he said anointing does not guarantee godly character in fact it tests it to the extreme <laughs> and I, and I, I think that's so true you know wow. you can get in some of these environments and being up front and leading and having God's hand on you while, while you do that, that's not going to guarantee that you you have the fruit of the Spirit in your no. life and you have a godly character. No. In fact, it might test that to the extreme. It, it does. And it But sure it's does. such an important thing. We've mentioned John Wimber a few times. Yeah, I, I love how he would talk about a ruthlessness with your heart. Wow. And I guess he'd seen so many people mess it up, so many people where the, the outward stuff was was outweighing the inner life yeah. or whether even they even messed up because they were so gifted and skilled right. and all doing all this stuff, but actually they were a mess on the inside. Yeah. And he, he said the real test in these days will not be in the writing and producing of new and great worship music. The real test will be in the godliness and the character of those who deliver it. Mm-hmm. And that, 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 that rings so true with me today as we have this conversation. Oh, it's, it's, it is, it really is everything. And I think, you know, it's so funny, just I'm grateful for the discipline of the Lord in my life. And if there's one thing, um, I, I was not, if there's one thing that I know in my flesh I am not wired to do well with is discipline. Um, I hate being disciplined. Like, I hate it more than anything. I, you know, I, I am, if left to my own devices, I am, I am the fool who rejects, like, wisdom, who, who rejects reproof. I'm like, I couldn't stand it. And some of that's just a fear of rejection, and there's all that stuff kind of wired into it. Yeah. But I'm so grateful for the way that the Lord has disciplined um, my life through situations or circumstances or, or fathers who spoke very bluntly to me in a way that almost offended me, did offend me. But but that I knew was was true all the same. And I, I feel like, you know, in this journey, 
some of the things that we've even touched on, and even some of the stuff I've touched on in my book, I I realize they, they can feel very harsh. In some ways, even like what John Wimber, it's like, said to a lot of worship leaders is almost offensive. Like, but what they watched is, is no, at some point you're, you're going to need these reproofs. You, you're going to need this discipline to keep you, to preserve you on, on a path. Because really what we want to see is longevity. Yeah. Like, and I, I think both of us have been in this for, you've been in this longer than I have, certainly in the spotlight longer than I have. We, we've been doing this a while. I feel like I'm on my seventh or eighth life as a worship leader. It don't <laughs> last very long, you know, on this. But I think some of the, some of the things that really contributed to that is looking at that character of going like, Holy Spirit, what does this mean? Like if, I, if I'm not walking with, with, with you in a greater, more deeper, more intimate way, what does this look like? If my family is in total chaos, what, what does the stage and platform mean? We just, we, we've seen that, that if you don't begin to put that stuff, if you don't have those people that, that will speak those truths into your life, if you don't go, Lord, I need more of the Holy Spirit and more of the fruits of the Holy Spirit in my life, there is no longevity here. There's this guy, John Wesley, who everyone I'm sure will have heard of. They had this thing uh, at college they called the Holy Club, which <laughs> wasn't, it's not the best branding I've ever heard of, but we'll, we'll, we'll overlook that today. Uh, but in the Holy Club, they would get together and, uh, you know, this is 200 years ago, but mm. their devotions privately and then when they were together, they would ask themselves these 22 questions. Jeez. And, and they're, they're exactly the kind of thing you're talking mm. about. Like question one, am I consciously or unconsciously creating the impression, the impression that I am better than I really am? Woo. I mean, that is, Woo. that's a Just crazy one. one for a while. Let's go back to the social media <laughs> for a minute and run, run this question through your social media use. No. Am I consciously or unconsciously wow. creating the impression that I'm better than I really am? Wow. Isn't that the name of the whole game? Yeah, man. <laughs> like question right there, two, am I on, question two, am I honest in all of my acts and words or do I exaggerate? Wow. One of the questions, am I a slave to dress or friends or work or habits? Oh. And here's a great one. Did the Bible live in me today? I mean, that's a great question for a worship leader, any worshiper, but a follower of Jesus. especially a worship leader. <laughs> Did the Bible live in me today? Wow. Something you touched on earlier. Do I pray about the money I spend? Wow. Uh, one of the questions just straight up, am I proud? Wow. You just ask the Holy Spirit, would you, would you search me? Would you show me the areas I've been proud in? Uh, one of the last questions, is Christ real to me? Hmm. Which is, again, a wonderful, deep question. But I love that they were ruthless with their hearts. Right. I love that you know, his people and they're, they're interested in ministry and, and they're learning about that. But at the same time, they realize the foundation is really going to be the make or break. It's true. Is, is this thing going to get built on a foundation uh, of, a good, of a good heart? And I, I, just, oh, I just have to say this. I, I, I just, again, we're so over time on this one. But, but I just like, we have to know that there's an enemy of our souls. And that he delights to sift us. And those yeah. things that feel harsh, that, that thing that feels like, oh, that's so religious or, you know, or just like, oh, I just don't like the, con you know, it's like we don't naturally lean into conviction. But let me tell you this, when, when it's the Lord, it's to preserve your life. It yeah. is actually love. It's, it's, yes. it's truth spoken in love and it will preserve your life. When you read through the book of Proverbs, it just talks about those who are simple and those who, who just keep going down the road to folly. But those who is like, let a wise man like rebuke me. It's kindness. It's like when we learn to lean in to the discipline of the Lord, to ask those questions, to be ruthless with our hearts, it's actually what we're doing. Is it's, it's like an armor of the Lord that, that comes on us and enables us to step into the fullness of our calling in Jesus. And otherwise, we are ill-prepared to face the enemy. Yes. And he delights to sift us to manipulate our hearts and to lead us down a road to ruin. Yeah. And, and I just go, hey, don't be afraid to ask those hard questions. Don't be afraid if the answer is ugly. That's what the mercy and the blood of Jesus is for. Yeah. Like to wash you and cleanse you and to lead. He, he, more, like, trust me, he is the one who, who, he knows what you were designed to do. And he is calling you into the fullness of that. Allow him. Don't confuse that with the voice, religion, <laughs> with religion or all those other things, because I feel like we've lost our appetite for some of those important things that, that are in place to mature us in our walk with Jesus. So I love that. That's wonderful. Let's pray. Let's do it. That's wonderful, Jeremy. I love that. And just as Quinton starts to play, quiet your heart today. There's a great quote from an Egyptian ancient father of the church who said, you need a spiritual pilgrimage. Begin by closing your mouth. Wow. You need a spiritual pilgrimage. Begin by closing your mouth. So even before we 
we speak for a moment here. Just, just take a moment to settle and just to open up your heart and just anything, any distraction, just put it away right now. Let's just have a moment with our God, the living God, the God who speaks. Jesus. And just let that opening quote settle over you today. Complete weakness and dependence will always be the occasion for the Spirit of God to manifest His power. Holy Spirit, we recognize our absolute poverty without you, our absolute weakness outside of you. Wow. Just bring us to our knees again today, just to fall down. And I say personally, Lord, I'm sorry for the times I've tried to yeah. go it on my own. Yeah. When I've gone Lone Ranger, gone ahead of you, or not invited you in, or not sought to follow you or be obedient to your promptings. Forgive me for the times where I thought I've got this. I want to be a worship leader and a worshiper who, who embraces their weakness and runs into the strength of who you are. Wow. I'll never forget um, as a spiritual kind of mentor, leader, friend of mine said, yielding to the Holy Spirit means giving the Holy Spirit what He wants. And Lord, um, we want to give you what you want. We want to give you the thing that your heart desires. We mm. want to render obedience. <laughs> it says obedience is better than sacrifice. Like the, the thing that you have been desiring from your people is a people who will be led, who will be in submission to you, who will be obedient to the promptings. And Lord, I just, I just, Lord, forgive us for all the ways that we have taken, we have been obedient and subservient to other leaders that aren't you, to other pressures, to other things that, that don't actually lead into the way of life, that don't actually release the life and the power of, of your spirit. Lord, I, I just pray that you would free us. You would free us and you would liberate us and you would teach us what it looks like to give you the thing that your heart most desires, to give to you the offering of obedience. Hmm. And we say this is a glad surrender today. Wow, come on. It's a joyful surrender. Come on. Because we trust you and we know That's you. That's right. And we know we're surrendering to, to a Father who is so for us. Wow. Come always on, has the best for us. So good. You, the one who gives good and perfect gifts. And we, so it's a joyful and glad surrender today. Yes, God. What a joy. We want it to be a total surrender. <laughs> yeah. So, Lord, I just pray, even as we share those stories, I feel like some of you guys are remembering moments in worship sets where you felt those same promptings and you weren't sure if that was the pizza you ate or whatever. But, but, but you're realizing now, oh, that, that could have been the Holy Spirit like speaking to me and there's, a, there's, a, there's an attentiveness in you now. And I just bless that sensitivity. Throughout Scripture, it says, blessed, you know, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. Um, eyes to see, let them see. And I, I just, I think the, the Holy Spirit is looking for those who have those ears. And I just bless your ears right now to hear the way I, I, I bless that, that inner knowing in you to recognize the voice of God speaking and leading inside of you. I bless that. Yeah. Eyes to be able to recognize what your Father is doing. It's the same eyes that Jesus had. Somehow you could see where his father was moving, who his father was resting on, what his father was leading him into. I just bless you right now with those eyes to see, even as you lead your church week in, week out, you would have such a sense of clarity. Oh, Father, I see you moving here. I see you doing this. You would have ears to hear the Spirit who burns with passion to see the people that you lead led into the fullness of what it means to worship. Yeah. Burns with with a fire that we, we we know so just just taste of. He burns for that. So I just he's gonna. I just feel he wants to bless you with ears to hear. Yeah. 
Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for your love for your bride. Come on. And we thank you that you're purifying your worshiping church. That's right. And we say yes to that. <laughs> uh, and we say today, would you, Lord, send revival. Start with oh, me. Come on. Start with me. I know I need to change. I, need, I know I need to grow. And so we say that today. Lord, send revival to your church and to the nations. Lord. Start a work in me today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we've come to the end of these six conversations. And we really hope they've been a helpful time to you. We've looked at holiness versus helpfulness and comfort versus confrontation, imminence versus transcendence. Those three were really all about making sure we get the right ingredients in the mix. And then we also looked at encounter versus entertainment, marketing versus mantle, and dependence versus experience. And I, I think those three podcasts were making sure that we stick to biblical kingdom approaches and values and, and not take our cues from the culture around us. And so we really hope that you found those helpful. And please do carry on the conversation with those around you, with those you're journeying with, and also with those who have the authority to help make some changes and to keep calling us out in these areas uh, where we need to be called out. And, and please share this podcast. If it's resonated with you in any way, share it with other people who you think um, might find it helpful too. But from Jeremy and myself and Quinton here, lots of love. God bless today. And who knows, maybe we'll get to chat sometime again soon. Bless you guys. Stop Press, there's a little change of plan. I've been saying throughout this episode that it's the last one in this series. But actually, we've decided to add one extra final episode next week. Another Q&A special where we get to hear from you and we try and answer some questions and comments that you have. So if you've got a burning question or anything to say, we've got a voicemail set up. You can call in and leave us a message with your question or a comment, and perhaps you'll end up being part of the conversation too. So call 1-888-774-5679, which is 1-888-77-GLORY. That's 1-888-774-5679 or 1-888-77-GLORY. But for now, thank you so much for listening in again. If this podcast series has been helpful in any way, please do recommend it around. And a big thanks to all who've helped us pull this together. Thanks to Gold Pacific Studios in Orange County, California, and to Quinton, our keyboard player, who's been along for the ride each time. A huge thanks to, to Sam Bailey for the fantastic theme music, and a wonderful, massive thanks to Jason Jones, Andrew Osenga, and all at the Integrity Music family, who've been such a big part of bringing these podcasts together. God bless you today, wherever you are, and look out for the question and answer special, episode number eight, arriving soon. Also, just to say, we'll be taking a break for a couple of weeks and we'll be back soon with a Q&A special. So make sure you subscribe. Keep an eye on when we're back. Can't wait to see you soon. <laughs>